Question. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. I rise to oppose this motion, of course. It gives me great pleasure to stand here as a member of this government and defend the Penn Hospital against its outrageous political attack as probably the only member of this parliament who was born in the PN Hospital. This motion is deceptive. This motion is, in fact, irresponsible. I say it's deceptive because the mover, the Honourable Walt Seacourt, uh, once the backroom operator of the previous failed Labor government, has kicked the door down into this chamber and brought with him the failed political tactics of the Abid Keneally government. Page, it's a page out of their mentor's book, Richo, with whatever it takes. That stench still lingers on that side of the, of the chamber. Bit smelly, Greg. The Honourable Greg Donnelly. The matter of reflecting on a member is well known as being out of order in this House. Um, I mean, Prepared to give a bit of latitude, but I mean clearly out of order. <coughs> on the point of and order, I'll keep interrupting if you like. I mean, the honourable Greg, uh, sorry, the honourable John Ajo. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, the uh, honourable member was talking about those members opposite. He did not reflect on a particular he member. As well. uh, he was <laughs> Uh, look, I have to say I wasn't listening closely enough, uh, but can I say to uh, the member uh, that there is a motion before the House. It's not an opportunity to slag off everyone in the chamber. So uh, address, uh, address the, the motion uh, and we'll all get along fine. Thank you, Mr Deputy President. Um, so it's whatever it takes to get back into government and this motion is part of that. It's designed it's designed to spread fear, insecurity and even panic in the population and in this instance in the population of Penrith. It's disgraceful. Motions like this are designed to undermine the health workers, the good nurses, the good doctors and the medical professionals working hard servicing the hospital and the PN, in fact those working in the general health sector across the state of New South Wales. Uh, I mean, you can smear the, the best health minister this state has ever had, the Honourable Gillian Skinner. That's part of her job to deal with That's that. That's not what her That's part of her job to deal with that. But you cannot stand there and then smear and smear the hard-working health workers of the Nepean Hospital to disgrace. This motion is but part of a political tactic to white ant our world-class health system and, more importantly, white ant the confidence and security of our community, many of whom are very vulnerable in Penrith. It's a disgrace. What, Walt Sick, Honourable Walt Sickle is always willing to be on the TV. He only knows one word. Crisis. 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 No, no, no. Only crisis, crisis, crisis. The only crisis in here well, today, Mr crisis. Deputy President, is the Honourable Walt Seacourt's credibility and his wobbly strategy. Nepean Hospital is a critical piece of government health infrastructure in the greater Western Sydney area. It's part of the Nepean Blue Mountains Health District. But hospitals are not just infrastructure. And I'm not, I don't fancy the word infrastructure. It's part of the soul of their community. In fact, it's where they fall back. It's their fallback. It's their backstop. It's their safeguard. It's their peace of mind and well-being. And, and they need to know that it's there for them when they need it. If you listen to the Honourable Walt Seacott, you think we only have Nepean Hospital in Western Sydney. In his speech, he didn't mention any other hospitals. So between RPA, which I assume he may go to, and Nepean, uh -huh. there are no other hospitals. He never, sp he never mentioned Westmead. Blacktown, Mount Druitt, Campbelltown or Liverpool. They're all major and expanding hospitals in a major growth area, but they're not in key seats that Labor is targeting. But then again, uh, they're not in the list of whatever it takes seats. The Honourable Watt Seacourt has Penrith in his sights and the Penn Hospital is a tool and its community, its patients, its medical staff are the innocent political fodder for this political game. It's a disgrace. But let's look at some facts around the PN Hospital. The PN Hospital uh, it, it serviced the growing the, the Penrith region and has looked after the health needs of patients in outer western Sydney and the Blue Mountains on its current site since 1956. And as I said, I was born there only eight years later. With the continuing population growth in the region, it's absolutely critical that investment into Nepean Hospital keeps pace with the uh, changing needs of the community. That is why this government, <laughs> the Baird government, I'm glad you find this funny, Honourable Walt Seacourt, because order, I'm, I'm delivering order. careful points. Order. Can I just remind the member you address through the chair, not have a discussion? Clearly uh, under scrutiny. The uh, government no. continues to make record investments into the local district health budget. This government has invested more than $70 million to upgrades in the Penn Hospital since 2011. $70 million, which includes upgrades to mental health and oral health facilities, additional car parking, there wasn't even a car park there under Labor, as well as the state's first Da Vinci robot, to name just some of the examples of some of the new pieces of equipment that are being rolled out across this hospital. Since we came to government, the allocated recurrent budget from the PM Blue Mountains Local Health District has increased by almost 50 per cent, 50 per cent, from $500 million to $740 million. The government is currently investing $4 million towards planning the major redevelopment upgrades in the PN Hospital. 
This work is currently underway and as we speak, the health infrastructure in New South Wales are finalising the clinical plan for Nepean Hospital, planning to make sure it's done right. And it's happening in this term as we promised. Since 2011, there's been an increase in the number of nurses. There's more than 234 new nurses have enrolled out across the district, 234 new nurses, and 70 new doctors have been employed in the local health district. The Nepean Hospital Emergency Department and Elective Surgery Performance has also improved dramatically since Labor was last in office, and those figures weren't cited by the Honourable Watt Secord in his speech. Or well, maybe they were in the part he didn't Oh, they were the part I didn't get to. Despite a 28 per cent increase in the number of emergency department presentation, that improvement has been dramatic as we are actually seeing more people through the hours. emergency department within for four hours. European. Furthermore, we have seen improvements in the percentage of elective surgeries completed with professionally determined timeframes. Urgent surgery within 30 days has increased from 93 per cent under Labor to 100 per cent under this government. Similarly, semi-urgent semi surgery within 90 days has increased from 71 per cent under Labor to 83 per cent in all categories yeah. under this government. The community in Penrith and across Western Sydney and in the Blue Mountains who use this hospital are consistently getting better service under this government than they ever had under the previous Labor government. The hospital figures prove it consistently. But let's turn to Labor's record on the PN, and it's not a pretty picture. No. Because not a lot was done in the PN under Labor. Let's face it, the seat has been one of their safe seats for most of the past 50 years. With time-serving Labor members, many of whom were ministers, Peter Anderson, Ron Mulock and Faye Lopo, just to name a few of them. And of course, Peter, Anderson, Peter Anderson was a health minister, Wonderful uh, uh, minister. Uh, before the Griner government came Wonderful in and started minister. to do some work on the PN. No real investment occurred in the PN until 2011 with this government's election. <laughs> and even Walt's Facebook page uh, agrees with this. Uh, oh, and, uh, yes. uh, on the 16th... Order. <laughs> Beg your pardon, the Honourable Walt Seacourt. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. I, I, I corrected that. Um, even the Honourable Walt Seacourt's Facebook page, though it doesn't so called that, uh, uh, agrees with this. On the 16th of March, uh, he posted that. Uh, oh. Facebook troll, we, uh, Shane Mallard. On the 16th of March, he, he posted oh. an attack on the PN Hospital, and Michael McHugh uh, at uh, 4.53 that day wrote uh, about the uh, hospital. He wrote, I'm not surprised. I worked there in the ED between 2007 and 2009, who, oh. was, in, who was in government then, government and it was horrendous then. Horrendous. 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 And guess what? I was in Canberra yes, during that time. Walt oh. thought. Walt to the thumber. Walt loved it. Walt loved it. Walt, yeah. Walt approved the comment. <laughs> so the Honourable Walt Seacourt approved it. That's a killer punch. But I'm, I'm, That's a killer punch. I'm quite it says Walt Seacourt approves this. <laughs> And now the outstanding local member, the outstanding local member, the Honourable Stuart Ayres, a more energetic and respected local member they have never had in Penrith, uh, thanks, uh, is doing the work. And I want to thank Stuart, the Honourable Stuart Ayres, who's done some research on Labor's promises for Nepean. So in the mode of whatever it takes, and hoping no one looks at their promises and pulls apart their announcements, the Labor Party committed during the last election campaign it made an announcement about investing in the PN Hospital, stating that it would set aside $351 million for the redevelopment. Immediately, immediately, they said. Reference is made to the PN Blue Mountains Local Health District Strategic Plan. Uh, and as I said, the Bear government made, has made a commitment to spend $4 million on planning the upgrade of the hospital before going ahead with any upgrade work. That makes sense, doesn't it? A policy document on the Labor Party's website states that the final decision on the project design will be made following $4 million of the planning process. So they have the same approach. Same approach. The funding proposal attached to the Labor Party's document entitled, quote, A Better Way, Labor's Fully Funded Infrastructure Plan, allocates only $116 million for infrastructure across the entire state in their first year. Do you understand that? They promised, they promised $351 million immediate spend on the upgrade, yet their budget for the first year for infrastructure across the whole state is $116 million. Oh. Doesn't make sense. That's doesn't right. add up. Doesn't make sense the and way you spell it out. Doesn't make sense. Not doesn't compute. make sense. I don't understand. Hang on. Computer says no. Yeah. Computer <laughs> says no. Hang on. They said $350 million when they were campaigning in Penrith and hoped no one would go back and look at the paperwork. Oh. Uh, Labor's entire infrastructure plan for their first year in office was only $116 million. Well the the Labor Party told the people of Penrith well. a big lie. They said that it would, they would spend $370 million on the hospital immediately, even before the $4 million was spent on the responsible planning. The Labor Party's policy states that it does not have the money to deliver. Their policy says we don't have the money to deliver. We've got to get $116 million. Where was it coming from? And that means that they cannot be trusted to deliver in the future. And that's the key point here. They can't be trusted to deliver in the future. That's their, that's their record. That's their record. Glossy brochures, big announcements. 
spending without planning. We all remember the $500 million wasted on the abandoned CBD metro rail to Balmain, which the Keneally government cancelled, or which the Honourable Walt Court was chief of staff to. Uh, $500 million wasted, not a rail lay. Nothing. Not a rail lay. Nothing. This is the leadership they show about planning, and that's the sort of promises they're holding out in health. No planning and glossy brochures so and cancel. This evidence is it, so so and this evidence and its own policy demonstrates that the people of Penrith, the people of New South Wales, cannot trust the Labor Party to deliver Shame. on the redevelopment of this hospital or any. At the election, uh, the recent election, we announced that we would plan the long-term future upgrade of the Penrith Hospital. Yes, that is the responsible approach to planning, funding, and delivering community infrastructure. That is our solid record we stand on. Not doorstops. Not irresponsible motions, not creating fear in a community, not undermining the not important work, workers. undermining the important work of all the staff in the PN hospital, not undermining the morale of our health workers. Same. To the doctors, if I could just say, to the doctors, to the nurses, to the administrative teams, and the plethora of other support staff that make the hospital function. And my grandmother worked in the PN hospital as well. I might add, every day work. I want to say. A heartfelt thank you from this side of the, of the, of the chamber yeah. for the work they do, the commitment well, they do. We do not so. underestimate or undermine your morale yeah, or your yeah, commitment yeah, to yeah, health. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and we thank you. I urge, the members, the I urge the members of this House to reject this motion for the fear-mongering yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. Chime.